So every week I try to add something new and build on the museum in some sort of way or another, be it a little thing or a big thing or something like that. Just trying to keep it moving along so at least every time there's something a little bit different and it moves along and progresses if you see what I mean because yeah the plan was it opened yeah they started opening nearly a month ago now and um yeah every time it's, that was bare minimum and then it's adding to it and adding to it and stuff since uh the last open day which was Sunday last Sunday uh well I've sorted out the um the factory school bell programmer stuff uh, basically what I did is I had to make a decent thing called a a risk assessment and um, I had a chat with a nice person called Duncan who actually built things his company worked his company built uh machines for the science museum and stuff like that and he's dealt with things that require risk assessments for things like things with old bits with mercury and stuff and I, I talked through the plan and he said it sounded like a good idea what I did was I got hold of this it's a mercury spillage kit it was about 40 pounds and um, yeah, mercury spillage and decontamination kit. This will be in the area, but uh, whoever's volunteered, I just basically need to say that you need to contact me because uh, then I, I do it. I've, I've, yeah, I've been pretty read up on it now and figured it out. I've had to clean up mercury before, but not, not here, but you know, it's just something. And there's now, uh, there's get, well, I need to sort out the sticker just now uh, before tomorrow uh, saying contains mercury, if you see um, anything, which you won't, because this is something that Duncan mentioned, is uh, you figure out uh, the risk, you figure out how possible it will be, has it ever happened, how possible is it to happen, and um, what will happen if it happens, and what are the chances of this and that and the other. And with this situation, it's, it's, it's pretty minimal, but you need to be prepared regardless. The other things that I've done is, you can see there is actually an underlight the underlight is just an LED strip that is out of view, and that means that the, the box is illuminated, but you can't actually see the light source from anywhere unless you were about 10 foot tall, which um, I'm not, you know, who knows who's gonna walk through the door? Well, uh, bend down and walk through the door. And uh, yeah, so that's a, that's a little feature, and it makes it look a little bit sinister. So it's pretty, pretty groovy. I haven't actually finished the code on that yet. Um, J3, um, uh, a commenter who frequently comments on the YouTube uh, made a bit of code for it that basically what happens is you twist the knob and it does it changes and gets more frequent when you're twisting the knob and then you stop twisting the knob and after about 10 15 seconds I'll set it it goes back to only ticking over once every minute but the but there's a there's a little problem with it still figuring it out so it's not not perfect so right now all it's doing is really just um, ticking every minute it's just working how it should be really so there's that one. Uh, there's also, uh, I've just got wired, quickly wired up the seven Teletubbies in the uh, little Teletubby tidal wave where I've got up to. And that is that aspect of it. Um, there's not much else. Oh yeah, the far shit, far shit, far shit. I'm really bad at pronouncing this kind of uh, word. That calculator's set up so it could be played on. The, the keys, um, they're really quite robust actually. They're way more robust than mechanical uh, keys on a computer, which are quite robust anyway. You know, like the Commodore PET, uh, stuff like that. So I've got the Commodore PET playing the PET synth, so it's like a synthesizer. Commodore PET's got pretty robust keys, but this one is something else. Like they are like whoosh, chung, 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 pretty, pretty bulky. And then finally, uh, I figured, well, this is what this video is about, is um an update on the uh, telephone exchange stuff. Well, the telephone exchange stuff, it's, uh, it's divided people that have been, uh, been doing videos about this. It's, it's a weird, weird side track that I ended up going down about, started it about two months ago. I was like, wow, that's amazing that this kind of thing existed. I've got to be honest, personally, I wasn't even aware of the existence of these kind of things. Yeah, until, yeah, about two and a half months ago. And now you can see what kind of a problem, it, how much it kind of just, entered my imagination to the point where I've ended up with quite a chunk of stuff. Um, yeah, it, it's it's pretty mad and um, it's amazing what you can get from money compared to synthesizers and stuff like that. Like these things are just like, it's. I'm always quite interested in things that don't seem to be that popular at the time. Like synthesizers maybe about five or 10 years ago, you could actually get a good deal and good deals are now getting a lot more further and few and far between. These sort of things, I mean, yeah, okay, they're not as useful, but you could still, it's weird. It's like going into a weird treasure cave of like unknown. 
Also regarding the telephone exchange stuff is I found it incredibly interesting in its function and it's a little bit addictive. I know it's driving, it's, it's really dividing uh, people who are watching this. So I'm really treating it. I can find myself getting lost in it, which is not good because it's not super productive to do this stuff when, you know, I'm trying to be doing a lot of other things as well. So like whenever I try, I try and like, if I've got a couple of hours free on an evening one day, then I try and sit down and try and knuckle away at the project and stuff. And yeah, that's how it's been going. This right here is the demonstration setup. You will have seen this a few times and this is still just functioning the same as it's always done. The ringer at the bottom, uh, if you don't know about that, go and check out the other videos on the channel and stuff talking about it. What this does is it's in charge of giving you all the tones, the beeps, the boops, the burps, the beeps. And basically what it is, is something that's spinning and it's got some tone wheels in it that when it's spinning around, it makes the tones. And, there's a, and then there's some cams and pushy switches over here that uh, are run by the motor as well, that actually uh, tell it to go to these tones to turn on and off and stuff, and also to send the ringing sounds over to the phones and stuff. Well, what I've done this week is I've actually wired this over to this. Uh, so uh, this one is now wired in to the ringers. Uh, I'll show you where it is rung wired in. So now around the back of it, this is the uh, external connectors for all of the weird ringing things. I've had a chat with a lot of helpful people actually because there wasn't actually that much information on here. There was a, there was a person called Matthew uh, on a Facebook page who sent me a load of links amongst a number of other very helpful people over on uh, some various uh, Strouder pages like the Facebook Strouder stuff and stuff like that. And yeah, after a little bit of fiddling around, it, it's, it's figured out what needs to sort of be plugged in. Currently, the busy tone, uh, the new tone, the dial tone and the ring tone, these are all actually wired over to the ringer. Uh, the wires go up and over and along and down over to there. And that's, uh, yeah, that's that. So those are all the sounds. That's what wired in so far. And there's a couple of other things that need to be wired in. This FA is a fuse alarm. So when there's a fuse that goes pops, this needs to be wired into something and that will actually be wired in. It won't be, it isn't wired in now, but it will be wired into these, these lights right, right here. But I'll just tell you what I've actually wired in so far. There's a number of other things. So, so I've wired in the RST. What the RST does is it tells the ringer motor to actually turn on. And that's something that I covered uh, recently uh, about all of this stuff anyway. But what the RST does is it wires up to a relay that is down at the bottom. And when you pick up a phone that is on this telephone exchange, it will uh, push this relay right here. And when this, put, when this relay is pushed, well, it now turns on the ringer, which is really quite useful. The other thing is the ringer that I have is not the right ringer for this. So I don't have everything that this telephone exchange needs. Apparently, um, uh, according to people like Matthew and Brendan and people like that who are on this uh, forum, uh, I need to send pulses through this S and Z pulse. Still not 100% sure what they actually do. A release alarm and stuff like that. Uh, I'm, I'll probably wire them at some point and that's the ringing. So that's the bring, 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 bring. These are, oh no, that's the pressure alarm. That's the cable pressure alarm. I'm not sure what PG alarm is. I'm sure somebody will, might help me. P pressure, cable pressure uh, reset. That's the one that turns it on. The ringers that go bring, bring. I haven't wired those in. Fuse alarm, release alarm. I need to send some pulses. I, I can't remember exactly, but these uh, do stuff. Uh, these time pulses, not sure actually. Uh, not sure, and the meter, these send the, these go from the, uh, from the master clock inside the exchange that actually wire in to these, which are the little meters, I'm pretty sure, that I think that tells these meters to tick over, and these are the ones that each single one of these are assigned to a different subscriber or household in the village. So that is how much you'd be paying, and um, if you look in here, they're pretty cool. Um, it's just an electromechanical switch uh, ticking over and counting, and I'm sure there's a way of resetting it as well. Uh, it's pretty cool. So yeah, not a massive amount of progress. All I've done this week is wire in this different sounds into here, so you can hear them going through the phone, and I've also wired in the RST, so when you pick up a phone that is connected to this specific telephone exchange side, well, it actually makes everything turn on. It makes this stuff turn on. So. The other aspect is, we spoke about before, are these ones. These ones are called line finders, and what these do is when there is a phone that is picked up, 
These are all the phone relays. There's enough for 50 phones here. There's three relays per uh, subscriber per phone. Uh, when, of one of it, when one of these, when when a phone gets picked up, these relays go, and then this this line finder or any of the line finders, one of the three line finders is like, wait a second, there must be a phone. So it lifts up and looks for uh, one of the contacts here, which is actually connected to one of these relays. And it looks for, I'm pretty sure it looks for a ground that is being told to stop there. And that is the phone that it's looking for. Uh, and you can have, this is how you can have multiple phone lines uh, going. So you can have multiple, multiple phones calling through this thing at the same time, thanks to these things. Uh, well, these things are directly connected. So this is the first one. This is the second one. This is the third one. This is the fourth one, fifth one, sixth one, seventh one, eighth one. Well, the first one, uh, they're, they're all directly connected to a group selector. So this first one directly connects to this one right here. So I've got three of these line finders working, these three. However, two of them, this one and this one, I found don't work every time. They're still a little bit unreliable. And it just like, it's just constantly like fiddling around, trying to fiddle around and figure out what the problems are. But this one in the middle is always working, which is really good. So what I've actually done is if you look here, I've got two, I've got three phone uh, connectors and they've got dodgy wires. It's not very well put. I just mashed this together earlier today and I've actually connected them over to this aspect. This is the whole part where all of the telephones are connect together. This is the ins and the outs. And if you see here, it's a very similar one. So there's the plus, uh, the minus, uh, the two P's in the meter for each of the telephones. What I've done is I've actually wired, uh, yeah, basically wired in three phones into this. So if I pick up uh, one of these, uh, all of these, you can just try whatever one you want, even the Mickey Mouse one, you pick it up. And what this does, I'll show you. So I'm gonna pick that phone up again and you'll see one of the line finders actually perking up the one that I know always works. You'll notice that's the only one with a little one of these red things in. This means that it's gonna do its thing. So uh, if I pick it up, it's gonna find the telephone that I've picked up and I'm picking it up now. Now it's looked for it and um, I'll put it down again and it hangs it up. Well, this uh, group, this line finder is directly connected to this group selector right here. Remember when I said this first one is connected to the first group selector, which is here. And then the next line finder, which is that one, is directly connected to this. So when I pick up the phone, it finds that line and then sends the telephone to go up to here. And it says, okay, now listen to this group selector. Well, what I've done is the output of this group selector, well, actually, no, not even the output of this group selector, the output of all of the group selectors, if you ring a number five, well, what it's gonna do is it's gonna look for a free uh, number uh, for a free group selector on there. Well, what that number five is, is actually uh, it wires up and goes over to uh, this uh, second group selector right here. So the numbers on here, if you type in from this phone, which is directly connected to these, if you type in uh, five, seven, eight, uh, I don't know, uh, like two zero, that calls Techmoan. And then if I do this, it's called Techmoan. And over here, we've got, we have Techmoan doing the phone call. Techmoan's actually talking through the telephone right now. Well, oh. Your assistance is required. Please ring operator services. So you've got that, but you remember that the number was actually 57820. Well, what that means is this one calls up five and looks for a free group selector. The way, the way these are all wired up is this one rings up to five, looks for a free one, and actually finds this, which is directly connected to the fifth level of this. So it's like, where are you? And then it finds this one. Well, I've just decided why don't we just, for now, just for fun, wire up the output of these ones, uh, well, the five of the output of all of these, to actually uh, basically act like this one. So it's sort of acting like it would in a telephone exchange in a way. However, there is a serious limit to how many phone calls you can have going on at once because there's, yeah, these are all just wired up in a way that doesn't really suit being able to receive multiple calls and this, that, and the other. So what we do now is if I lift this up, if I dial in five, yeah, basically it now goes over to this telephone exchange. So it sort of simulates moving from one to the other. So now you've rung five over here from these phones 
and it's gone over here and then you can now go over to the other parts of the telephone exchange. It's only a very, very small uh, addition to this, but it's just a bit of fun to show that it's actually can do that. So now you can actually make the phone calls to all of the other things like this stuff over here from and all of the other things like the phone in the hallway, the answer machine, the stuff like that. And soon these ones, which are called diverticles, which are 1990s versions of the uh, announcement machine down there. Well, that means these are all wired up. The only, down, the only thing that I haven't wired up to these ones yet is their own telephone number. So the next plan with all of these is being able to wire up a certain telephone number to each of them separately. So we can finally actually allocate uh, bits of the next parts of these as well as the final selectors up here, which are the ones that actually delegate and go over to the phone numbers over here, which are not connected at all. So, but it's cool because now today there's a little bit, as I'm trying to do a little bit of progression every week, is it just means all of these make a bunch of noise and that means this makes a bunch of noise and there's things to look at now instead of the last few times where it was just doing absolutely nothing and it was just it was just sitting there at least it's actually it's actually doing something so the next thing that I need to do on this specific project is actually build an Arduino machine that sends pulses into this uh, that would have come from a different type of ringing motor machine that I don't have. It's a specific thing for this that sends a few more different extra things that this one doesn't send. So what I need to do, specifically they're called the S and the Z pulse. So uh, they're they're like, I can't remember exactly what they are between, there's a few, there's like a few milliseconds and then a little pause and then some more milliseconds and stuff like that. So what I've got is I've got, I've got this little, um, I've got this little random uh, relay holder. This just holds uh, random relays. So we've got some random relays here. Boop. And then I'm going to put them in here, build some Arduino in here and then build this couple of lights or something and pop it right on the top above here. And this will turn on at the same time when that relay uh, turns on, that turns on the ringer. It will start making the Arduino do all the thing and send the pulses. That's the next job on this. And then after that, we're going to try and make phone calls for all of the telephones over here and then move all move telephones around and then also try and get a telephone over to the micro museum if i'm going to ask them first i haven't asked them i should ask them say can i please see because uh, we've spoken about it and it's really it is actually possible to do it if we wanted to but i've got to see if they want a telephone uh, wired up so if when and if uh, when and they open uh, then a telephone exchange they will be they will be able to directly call any phone that's in here as well and also there's not to mention after that is making uh, a transformer and circuits to be able to plug it in and listen to any synths or anything that's being played around here so what the plan is is you can pretty much have it's this has about you can have a hundred outlets so you can have literally you can call a hundred different things so there's no reason why you can't just call like every there's a wire going to all of the different instruments and you can literally call up and it automatically answers when you phone that specific instrument and you can call up and listen to it i think that might be one of the best best plans to be honest so you can like you can hear there's like a mountain there's a wall of sound coming from around but you want to pinpoint one specific thing let's say the mega drone or the i don't know i don't know what's wired in the bouncing ball simulator or the I don't know, a fart machine of specific uh, tone. Well, you can call that thing up from the directory and listen to it. I think that might be what these things might be used for. And then also, not to mention, that's when we get it being able to be wired in and, and setting one of the lines free so people can call in from the internet. Obviously, it would be a bummer if just people always call from the internet and it isn't usable here. However, if we try and reserve a bit of it for the internet so they can call in and call some of the numbers and just reserve a couple of the group selectors and stuff like that for the internet phone calls, that'd be quite cool. So what, uh, just another bit of a more ramble. So um, in order to set up a phone call, I still need to figure this out. I'm still reading a lot and still figuring it out, but the plan is, I think, is doing it somewhat similar to this. I would love to try and track down some more rows of group selectors, but I, oh, oh, I just, just group selectors, just a bunch of group selectors, and then you could just like open them up because right now we're, 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 you're throttled by the amount of switches that you have to have multiple phone calls going on at the same time. So 
the phone numbers, the lengths of them that would be here may be a little bit shorter. And in fact, these ones may become a number shorter. So it'll be like a four number instead of a five number. So this one, let's say we pick up a phone and we want to call it directly on this one. Well, if uh, well, we're going to put a different first number on it. So these ones on this side, these ones are specifically, uh, they start at five. So this is a five number. You call in five and then it goes over to here and takes it there. What if we called on this side, I don't know, three? I don't know what the standards are supposed to be or two or something like that. So this one's always starts with two. So we type two and it jumps up to one of these and then maybe we do um, a couple of these are directly connected to two. So there's a, I think these two are actually free waiting for phone calls. So we set these two group selectors to listen to the number two. And what it does is it looks through and sees if either of these two are free and it goes and grabs onto that free uh, thing. And then what that will do is it will send it up to the final selector rows and then it will look for a free final selector and then we'll dial in and we'll, that's when we can actually use the coordinates of the hundred different outlets. And that's when we can actually plug it into phone calling if, if the museum, if the micro museum wants a phone, phone call in the micro museum or phone calling one of those phones or phone calling uh, one of the simps or phone calling one of the audio things or something like that. And then it just makes it all just a little bit more fun, I think. I think it'd be quite cool. So there's a lot of work, but actually it's starting to work. I'm just quite pleased. There's, there's one thing that I really need to do quite soon is fixing, uh, there's five of these group selectors that have little bits of problems here and there. So we need to address that. That's gonna be one of the videos. I'm actually just gonna look through them and talk about the problems. And then hopefully, if somebody knows what they're talking about, they can give us a bit of a hand because I've, I've fixed quite a few of them, but there's some that I'm just like, where is the problem? I don't know what relay is causing the problem or if there's a specific contact that I should be focusing on. I've looked through the, uh, the group selector uh, manual that says how it runs and I'm getting reasonably well versed, but still, you know, I've, I've only been doing this for a couple of months and I'm still just a, a plonker at heart, you know. So we've got to fix those try and get a couple of line selectors. I think if I can get those three line selectors that I said, if I can get the other two as reliable as the first one, I think there's enough line finders, line finders, not line selectors, line finders uh, to make this worthwhile. Because that means that you can, we can technically, if we really wanted to, have maybe four phone calls going on at once. There'll be these three phone calls, and then it'll also be this phone call, because this one can only take one phone call at once, and then this one will be able to take three phone calls at once. The other amazing thing is I've just realized, oh my God, is if you don't remember uh, the, the um, what are you called? The Google counter, well, that has an audio out. I forgot about that, you can phone the Google counter. Oh, I totally forgot about that. Yeah, this is great, like the realizations. But anyway, uh, that's just a little bit of information. I know, I think for tomorrow, there are, I think there's three tickets left, or maybe four, I can't remember. There's three or four tickets left. I know that uh, there's only on the, and by the way, the hour slots, I know I've been talking about the hour slots, they're only loose kind of things. You don't need to stay for directly that hour. And if you accidentally turn up a little bit late, I'm sure it's fine, we can figure it out. Like people tend to stay between, some people stay for half an hour, like I said, and some people stay for three hours and stuff. So don't worry, they're, they're very rough to try and keep an eye on the capacity and how many people come. So yeah, just a bit of fun. And I am, it is, uh, it is Saturday evening right now. And what I'm gonna do is I need to um, just double check this is right and then I need to go over and do a bit of cleaning here, edit this video, finish for the day and then uh, come back tomorrow, do a day of museum and then carry on with the Teletubby Tidal Wave. So yeah, if you wanna come to the museum tomorrow, try this out, then do it. If not, there's a couple of other dates. There's the 22nd of August and then it's the um, 2nd of September, which is also coincides with the Ramsgate Festival of Sound Sonic Trail. So there's a whole trail around Ramsgate where you look at different exhibitions and sounds and things like that and sound pieces and stuff. And then you can also come to the museum. There's a Teletubby -tub Tidal Wave in a different place and that'll be done by there. It'll be a different place. And then after that, the Teletubby -tub Tidal Wave is gonna come over and sit in the corridor of the museum going down the whole, whole side. How cool is this? It's just amazing, ah, oh, just, just madness. So yeah, um, I'm trying to track down a few more of these bad boys and it'll be, it'll be like a dream come true setting up and listening to all of the, all of the different simps. But anyway, I hope everything's all right. I'm Sam. This museum is not obsolete. This is a big old, very heavy hunk of, uh, 
hunk of iron <laughs> and yeah have a lovely time maybe see you tomorrow toodly do